The long-sealed entrance for Jesus' return has now swung open. What now? This medieval barrier, known as the Golden Gate in Jerusalem, was sealed in the 16th century to fulfill Ezekiel's prophecy. He predicted that it would only open when a prince, identified by Christians as Jesus, returned. Could this startling occurrence foreshadow a momentous event? Let us consider what this might entail for humanity's final chance to be with Jesus. The Golden Gate shutdown is directly related to a prophecy from the biblical prophet Ezekiel in chapter 44, verse 13. Ezekiel said that the gate will remain sealed until a prince, whom Christians believe is Jesus, returns. This gate is more than simply an old structure. It is a strong symbol of the route to eternal life through Jesus, demonstrating a direct connection to salvation as taught in Scripture. The Eastern Gate, often known as the Golden Gate, is a major landmark in Jerusalem. It is more than just a physical barrier. It is a symbol frozen in time that influences our knowledge of the past and our expectations for the future. The narrative of the gate has great resonance for Jews, Christians, and Muslims. This ancient gate is significant not just in the layout of Jerusalem, but also in the spiritual histories of these great faiths. Historically, the Eastern Gate is said to be the Messiah's entrance into Jerusalem. This idea is based on religious prophecy, particularly in Christianity and Judaism, which lends spiritual significance to the sealed doors. However, this is not the only intriguing element. Sultan Suleiman sealed the gate in the 16th century, which was more than a defensive or architectural choice. It was an intentional action with religious implications. Many regarded this as a fulfillment of biblical prophecies, a sign that old predictions were coming true and important events were on the horizon. The locked gate serves as a poignant reminder of the relationship between faith and history. Human decisions can reverberate across time, influencing the spiritual and future expectations of many societies. Each layer of understanding exposes more about our human spirit, our desire for meaning, and how our stories and ideas relate to the actual world around us. But there's more to the story. The closing of the gate is more than just a historical occurrence. It is a strong symbol of Christianity's belief that Jesus is the only way for mankind to reach God. With the expectation of Jesus' return, this symbol takes on much more significance. Many Christians believe that when Jesus reopens this shut gate, it will be a historic event, signaling His return and the fulfillment of God's promises. This idea connects the past and the future by linking prophecies, historical events, and key principles, demonstrating a continuous thread across Christian teachings. God's purpose to preserve humanity is complete, and His kingdom has been founded. This gets us to a historic gate in Jerusalem, a city important to many religions, and the location of many significant events, giving its existence a specific value. This gate is significant for more than its structure. It represents God's eternal promise and the hopes of the faithful. For Christians, this gate represents cherished traditions and the awaited return of Jesus. It's more than simply an antique relic. It's a living symbol that continues to inspire and provoke thought in both believers and scholars. It demonstrates the enduring power of faith, connecting the physical and spiritual worlds and influencing contemporary religious ideas. Jerusalem's old city is surrounded by fortified walls with eight main entrances. The Eastern Gate, which faces the Mount of Olives, is famous for being closed and considered the oldest, having been built around 520 AD. Christians refer to it as the Golden Gate due to its historical and spiritual significance. It has a significant impact on the region's ongoing saga of faith and prophecy. But that's hardly the most unexpected aspect. The Eastern Gate, with its rich history, represents hope and fulfillment for many believers. The fact that it stays closed adds to the mystery and significance, prompting a variety of interpretations and prophecies. The gate's closure is thought to be linked to significant events in religious literature, making it a focal point for those researching prophesies. Its location overlooking the Mount of Olives connects it to major episodes in Jesus' life, reinforcing its centrality in Christian history. However, there is more to the story. The gate's presence in Jerusalem, a city with a history of war and change, serves as a reminder of faith's everlasting essence. 
It exemplifies the city's indomitable character and its critical role in the spiritual lives of millions around the world. In Hebrew stories, the Sha'ar Harachamim, sometimes known as Sha'ar Harachamimi, is an important place. It is the closest site to where the Jewish temple formerly stood, making it a particular place for Jews to meet and pray. Ottoman Sultan Suleiman closed up this gate in 1541. The gate we see now features a double entry leading to two arched apartments in the 16th century design. The Golden Gate is located on the north side of the Temple Mount's eastern wall. It has been built and rebuilt during several historical periods. It began during King Hezekiah's reign, then improved under Zerubbabel, the Hasmonean dynasty, and most notably the Herodian period. The current gate is thought to be built over an older gate on the same wall. Under the shuttered entrance, you can still discern an arch from the ancient gate, indicating its lengthy history. The gate's concealed purpose mirrored old rites and beliefs. The marble pathways. However, this was not the only view. Rabbi Eliezer maintained that the way was more than just a road. It was composed of marble pillars and cedar boards. It wasn't for everyone. It was reserved for the high priest and his assistants during major religious rites, such as the Red Heifer Ceremony or the Yom Kippur Scapegoat. This special gate, known as the Shushan Gate, served a specific purpose and was essential for these vital religious ceremonies. Some historians believe the gate we see today was erected around 520 AD during the Byzantine period. They believe it was one of Emperor Justinian I's several building projects in Jerusalem. This gate was erected on the foundations of a previous gate. However, some believe the gate was built later, in the 7th century, by Byzantine craftsmen working for the Umayyad Caliphate. However, this was not the most interesting aspect. Dutch archaeologist Lien Rittmeyer, who investigated the gate in the 1970s, believes the enormous gateposts inside were from an even older gate, most likely the Shushan Gate. Mishnah Midat 1. 3 mentions this gate as the only one on the Eastern Wall during the First Temple period. In his book Jewish Law, philosopher Maimonides wrote that during the Second Temple period, someone entering by the East Gate would walk on flat terrain until they reached the end of the rampart. Then they would climb twelve steps to reach the Court of Women. This demonstrates the gate's historic and religious significance in ancient rites and processions. Each step was approximately half a cubit high and deep. During the Ottoman Empire, a little recess on the west side of the Golden Gate served as a brick-making hub. These bricks were essential for repairing and maintaining the structures on the Haram Es Sharif, popularly known as the Temple Mount. Nearby, a tiny mosque was built to serve the brickmakers. However, in the 19th century, the Sultan ordered the demolition of this mosque and a portion of the gate's wall to make way for more upgrades. This resulted in the construction of two new arches and a new stretch of wall on the gate's western side. However, that wasn't the worst part. Getting to the gatehouse from the Temple Mount required descending a wide staircase to a rectangular ground floor that was 24 meters long and 17 meters wide with thick external walls. This area was cleverly separated by columns into two equal halves. In an underground tomb, the top of an ancient arch was visible, with its lower stones still buried. This demonstrated that the ground level was substantially lower in the past than it is today. The Ottomans later converted this locked gate into a watchtower, reusing its former strength for new purposes. This is only one of the countless alterations that this site has undergone over the years. However, this is not the end of the narrative. The Golden Gate is an outstanding example of creative building. Unlike the other gates, which fit harmoniously with the surrounding walls, the Golden Gate's eastern side stands out by two meters. This gate has two magnificently designed sides, demonstrating the expertise of its constructors. The structure comprises two main corridors, which are clearly seen in the design. On the ground floor, four massive columns separate a vaulted hall. These aisles bring visitors to the doors of mercy, Bab al-Rama, and repentance, Bab al tauba Upstairs, there's a space with two great roof domes and three pairs of lesser domes that overlook the walkways below. However, this is not the most exciting element. Historically, the eastern side featured two huge portals each with a semicircular arch and a decorative band separated by a strong column. 
These doors, each 3.90 meters wide, were sealed during the Ottoman period, giving the gate a melancholy appearance. The Golden Gate's design is strikingly similar to other buildings in the Levant, indicating a blend of cultural influences. The main hall, accessible through the gate's apertures, leads to a rectangular domed chamber measuring 20.37 meters long and 10.50 meters wide. Originally, this space contained six shallow elliptical domes, but they were eventually replaced with two bigger ones. These domes are supported by arches rising from two pilasters at the entrances and two central columns, resulting in a lovely rhythm that leads visitors through this historic and spiritual space. However, this is not the end of the narrative. The Golden Gate is a truly unique and fascinating portion of the Al-Aqsa region due to its combination of design elements rich history and cultural influences. It's more than simply a gate. It's a journey through time and culture, displaying the remarkable craftsmanship and architectural genius of its designers. The Golden Gate's design incorporates a unique feature in which the facade extends two meters from the wall. This odd feature raises questions regarding the gate's purpose and historical significance. The Golden Gate has a rich and fascinating history. It has been opened and closed numerous times throughout the centuries. The Muslims originally sealed it in 810. The Crusaders reopened it in 1102, but Saladin closed it again in 1187. Later, in 1541, Ottoman Sultan Suleiman the Magnificent rebuilt the gate and the surrounding city walls before permanently sealing them. This closure has lasted until this day. Suleiman closed the gate for more than just defense. The Sealed Gate Suleiman's Legacy and Prophecy Suleiman's decision to lock the gate may have been for defensive reasons, but it was also motivated by religious convictions. According to Jewish belief, the Messiah will enter through the Golden Gate. Knowing this, Suleiman, understanding that Muslims also consider Jesus as a Messiah, may have sealed it to prevent any fake messiahs from entering. To be sure, the Ottomans built a cemetery in front of the gate, believing that Elijah, who is prophesied to appear before the Messiah, would be unable to traverse a graveyard. However, some Jewish rules make exceptions for priests to enter cemeteries. In 2003, Israeli officials barred access to the Temple Mount's Golden Gate because it was operated by a Hamas-linked entity. This was also done to prevent illicit construction by the Islamic Waqf, which was destroying old Jewish treasures. Despite these concerns, the gate's interior reopened to Muslim worshippers in February 2019. However, the gate remains sealed. This ongoing closure demonstrates how history, religion, and politics continue to affect the tale of the Golden Gate. Over the centuries, Jerusalem's walls and gates have been knocked down and rebuilt numerous times. The Eastern Gate stands out as the oldest, having remained in its original location throughout history. This gate remained intact during Suleiman the Magnificent's extensive rebuilding from 1539 to 1542. Large stones from the 6th century BC, most likely erected during Nehemiah's time, demonstrate the site's long history. However, this was not the most interesting aspect. In 1541, Suleiman made the decision to close the Eastern Gate. This was more than just a building decision. It held significant meaning. It fulfilled a prophecy from the biblical book of Ezekiel written over two millennia ago. Suleiman's decision to block the gate was intriguing due to his Islamic beliefs, but it also showed the linkages between diverse faiths and the shared significance of this old city. The sealed gate also faced obstacles. During the Six-Day War, several Jewish soldiers attempted to force open the Eastern Gate. They expected a huge triumph. However, an Orthodox Jewish leader vehemently opposed this. He felt that the gate should remain closed until the Messiah arrived, which was a religious custom. However, this was not the end of the story. During World War I in 1917, Muslim officials wanted to completely destroy the gate in order to undermine the prophecy's power and take control. However, their intentions failed. On the day they planned to demolish it, the city fell under British control. This unexpected turn contributed to the Eastern Gate's historic and spiritual complexity as each group's acts appeared to fit into a wider, unseen pattern of destiny and belief. 
Jewish rabbis strongly think that the Messiah will appear as a formidable military leader from the East. They believe that the Savior will enter Jerusalem through the Eastern Gate, signifying the city's independence. To prevent this from happening, Muslims locked the gate centuries ago and built a graveyard in front of it. They felt that no devout rabbi would cross a graveyard, preventing the prophecy from coming true. However, this action simply highlighted the prophecy they attempted to halt. The New Testament contains a similar mix of Acts and Old Prophecies. In Acts 2, Peter quotes the prophet Joel to describe the events of Pentecost. Joel's remarks are commonly associated with the second coming of Christ. This relates to the Golden Gate and its mention in Ezekiel 44, 1, 2, where it is stated that the gate would be vital in future events. Peter's use of this prophecy without Jesus naming the Eastern Gate suggests a deeper interpretation. Perhaps the Golden Gate gives us a glimpse of what's to come. The term foretaste, which means a preview, allows us to perceive the Golden Gate as an early precursor of the coming Eastern Gate in the Millennial Kingdom. However, we must balance this viewpoint with the Bible's explicit teachings rather than just historical facts or ideas. Some theological authorities debate the relationship between the Golden Gate and Ezekiel's visions of a Temple Gate, but their perspectives range. Many experts believe Ezekiel referred to a temple gate rather than the existing golden gate. There is also an intriguing Jewish story that links the sealed golden gate to the projected return of the Shekinah, God's presence, during the Messianic Age. As a result, the golden gate serves as a symbol of hope and divine promise, rather than just a gate. It alludes to the East Gate, which may emerge in the future millennial temple, and is distinguished by its unique location and extended closure. Through all of these traditions, texts, and human deeds, the narrative of the Eastern Gate remains an important aspect of discussions about Jerusalem's future and the fulfillment of divine promises. Nearly 500 years ago, Sultan Suleiman, a notable Muslim leader, made a bold move by shutting Jerusalem's Eastern Gate with 16 feet of cement. This wasn't simply about improving defenses, it also had significant theological implications. Suleiman most likely sought to prevent any incidents that could confirm Christian prophesies about the Messiah's advent. The Eastern Gate, often known as the Golden Gate, is crucial to biblical prophecy and fascinates people who research religious prophecies. The book of Ezekiel in the Bible mentions this gate multiple times. For example, Ezekiel 10.18, 19 mentions the glory of the Lord leaving the temple by this gate and proceeding to the Mount of Olives. Later, in Ezekiel 11.23, the splendor returns to the temple from the same direction. The prophecy of the gate connects previous occurrences to future hopes, unlocking prophecies. The Eastern Gate's Mysteries In Ezekiel 43, 1, 5, the prophet portrays the glory of the Lord re-entering the temple through the Eastern Gate, which represents a significant spiritual rejuvenation. However, Ezekiel 44, 1, 2 adds an intriguing twist. The gate should be closed because the Lord, the God of Israel, has passed through it, implying that no one else is worthy to pass through it after him. However, this is not the most exciting element. In Ezekiel 46, 12, a prince is authorized to utilize the gate for offerings. Many people interpret this as a direct allusion to Jesus Christ. This is consistent with the New Testament account in Matthew 21, 1, 11, in which Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem foreshadows the Lord's prophesied return. Muslim rulers sealed the gate, which some believe fulfilled the prophecy that it would be permanently closed. This sealing has fueled speculation among many who believe the gate will only be opened when Christ returns for His second coming and enters Jerusalem through the now-closed Eastern Gate, as prophesied in Zechariah 14, 4. But the story does not stop there. This interpretation provokes arguments and keeps people speculating about the future, particularly when the Eastern Gate may reopen. This event would have profound religious significance for people around the world. The Golden Gate is significant in the spiritual and historical background of Bayt al-Maqdis, particularly during the period when Muslims governed the region. People like Ubada Ibn al-Samit noticed strong parallels between the eastern wall of this hallowed site and beliefs concerning the end of the world. According to famous Islamic scholar Ibn Kathir, this wall is not the same as the one referenced in the Quranic passage, 
so a wall will be put up between them, with a gate therein, Surah 5713. However, early Islamic scholars frequently used it to clarify their interpretations of this scripture. This interpretation may have initiated the habit of burying the dead close outside the Al-Aqsa Mosque's eastern wall. The name Al-Ramah for this gate implies that it has ancient roots, maybe dating back to when it was initially built. This name suggests a deeper symbolic link to the place, particularly the sacred rock associated with last-day motifs. So, Bab al-Rahma can be viewed not only as a physical gate, but also as a symbolic gateway to heaven or divine mercy, adding to its spiritual significance among the community. This gate, built in the early days of Islamic control, stands out as an important structure in the area. According to Ezekiel 44, 1, 3, the eastern gate is also exceedingly holy, since it is thought to be the location where the Shekinah, or divine presence, manifested and will appear again when the Messiah returns. This concept demonstrates the gate's long-standing holiness and may explain why, during medieval times, particularly the Crusader period, Jews gathered here to plead for forgiveness at what they viewed as a portal to the divine. The Golden Gate, located in the heart of the city near the Western Wall, is significant in religious terms, gaining the moniker Sha'ar Har in Christian sources other than the Bible. This historic gate provides the site for an important meeting between Mary's parents. This is where the concept of the Immaculate Conception originates. Many artworks depict Joachim and Anne meeting here, highlighting significant events in Mary's life. Some researchers believe this gate is identical to the beautiful gate referenced in the Book of Acts. Chapter 3. However, this idea is debatable. The misconception stems from a mix-up of the Latin word aurea, which means golden, and the Greek word horas, which means beautiful. However, this was not the only misunderstanding regarding the gate. The Golden Gate plays an important role in Jesus' life story. According to the Bible, Jesus entered Jerusalem via this gate on Palm Sunday while riding a donkey. This act fulfilled a prophecy made in Ezekiel's book, chapters 44, 1, 3. The Synoptic Gospels back up this tale, emphasizing the gate's historical and spiritual significance. Through these stories, the gate serves as a reminder of pivotal times in faith and prophesy in the city's religious history. The story begins as Jesus descends from the Mount of Olives and moves quickly to the Temple Mount. This is described in Mark 11, 1 11. Meanwhile, the Gospel of John reports that the Pharisees were witnessing this significant event, maybe from the Temple Mount as well. For those who believe in the prophecy of Ezekiel 44, 1. 3. The Golden Gate has a profound spiritual significance. For Muslims, this gate is known as Bab al Rahma, which means Golden Gate, and it is also referred to as the Gate of Eternity. However, that is not the most intriguing portion. This is more than just an old and magnificent edifice, it is also a location of great spiritual significance. Muslims believe that this is where Allah will pronounce the final judgment and the resurrection will occur. This mutual regard for the same gate by Christians and Muslims demonstrates a unique relationship between the two faiths, with each considering it as having its own spiritual significance. What makes this even more remarkable is how both religions find common ground in one single location. This combined significance enriches the Golden Gate's meaning and history, making it a potent emblem for both faiths. The Golden Gate's history is rich in cultural layers. The Eastern Gate's role. The Golden Gate in Jerusalem is a significant site. When discussing the coming of the Messiah, both historically and in the future, this location has a rich history and has frequently served as the focal point of heated debate. Jewish practices and legends from beyond the Bible led medieval Christian painters to depict the Virgin Mary's life. These artists depicted the meeting of Jesus' grandparents, Joachim and Anne, at the Golden Gate. This encounter represented Christian's ideal of purity in marriage. However, this was not the most interesting aspect. The ritual of a groom carrying his bride over the threshold may have originated with the Golden Gate symbolism. The concept of Mary's Immaculate Conception was frequently depicted in medieval paintings of the Virgin and Child with Saint Anne. These artworks, known in Italian as the Materza, depicted three generations, grandmother, mother, and son, creating a visual link between the eras. 
This picture had a significant impact on Pope John Paul II, particularly in his work. Theology of the Body His writings, collected under the title Crossing the Threshold of Hope, sought to deepen Roman Catholics' faith by addressing these topics. Pope John Paul II's intellectual work aimed to assist Christians understand the deeper implications of sacred encounters and symbols, so fostering a more meaningful engagement with their religion. Just before the turn of the millennium, numerous notable works began to discuss the challenges of materialism and the spread of secular ideas. This was a critical period in which the distinction between the physical and spiritual worlds became obvious. The Golden Gate is a powerful symbol of this as it is frequently interpreted to represent the mystical body of the church, which is revered as Christ's bride in many traditions. According to Christian teachings concerning the end times, known as eschatology, the first light of dawn in the East serves as a reminder of Christ's resurrection on Easter Sunday. It also indicates the direction from where Christ is likely to return. This concept is profoundly embedded in Christian traditions. For example, many churches are designed to face east. Furthermore, the layout of many old Christian cities contains gates that open to the east, demonstrating spiritual belief and expectation. However, this is not the only issue. This architectural choice demonstrates a profound appreciation for the significance of Easter morning. It also symbolizes an optimistic outlook on Christ's impending return, combining remembering with expectation, both of which are essential components of the faith. However, there was more to it. The emphasis on facing east in both structures and city plans was more than just a matter of orientation. It was the outward representation of a spiritual concept. It was a method for believers to maintain hope and remembrance in their daily lives. Furthermore, the symbolism goes beyond the architecture. This alignment towards the east serves as a constant reminder of the promise of a future return, connecting everyday life to great spiritual expectations. It is not only about the past or the future, but also about how these ideas impact the present by influencing behaviors and decisions. But that is not all. This practice acts as a continuous thread connecting believers over time, offering a sense of unity and common purpose. It is a daily reaffirmation of faith, bridging the gap between historical events and future prospects, and incorporating the spiritual journey into everyday life. In many cities, religious symbols are placed in prominent locations. They fulfill two primary functions, defending the city from danger and blessing travelers. For example, in Vilnius, Lithuania, there is the Ostra Brahma. This location is home to the icon of Our Lady of the Gate of Dawn, which is venerated by both Roman Catholics and Orthodox Christians. This combination of protection and spirituality can be found in other historical sites. The eastern gate of the Old City, commonly referred to as the Golden Gate, is significant in Christian narratives. This is thought to be where Mary's parents met again after the Annunciation, making it a symbol of Jesus' virgin birth. According to some traditions, Jesus passed through this gate on Palm Sunday, which adds to its prominence. However, this is not the most exciting element. Over time, Jerusalem's locked eastern gate has become more than just a physical barrier. It represents several historical occurrences, spiritual prophecies, and profound faith. The history of this gate is intricate and linked to numerous significant religious events. The Eastern Gate, which was closed by Sultan Suleiman and mentioned in the Bible by Ezekiel, encourages visitors to learn about its rich history and spiritual significance. These activities make it an important destination for people looking to connect with the historical and mystical aspects of their faith. The gate, which is rich in religious history, plays an essential role in the city's structure. It has witnessed many momentous events throughout the years, and it has evolved into more than simply a structure. It is a deep metaphor that connects the earthly and the holy. It remained closed for centuries, serving as a powerful symbol of humanity's eternal connection to the divine. Does the old gate's enduring legacy genuinely connect us to the divine, or is it merely a symbol shaped by human perception? Like, comment, and subscribe for more. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus.